Acts 1, 1 through 8. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, and in his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait, for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for not only the fact that Jesus was found faithful by you, but that his followers were faithful to his message. That through the ministry of those first century Christians, the message did reach the uttermost parts of the world. It found us. And Father, it's our prayer that by knowing the way in which they said to go to Jesus, that we can answer the question this morning where we're going. Father, it's our prayer that we will be able to see the things which Jesus did, the things which were witnessed about him. And when we've heard the testimony that we will be convinced of the decision we need to make. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So it's Easter. The sermon title is Where Are You Going? And we just looked at a video clip that said you're going the wrong way. I don't want you to have a preconceived notion at this point. What I want us to do, though, is ponder this question. Where are we going? Are we going the right way? What we've done in this sermon series is we've looked at the events of the crucifixion, the resurrection, and look for an answer to the question of where people are going. And today, looking at what Jesus did on this Easter Sunday, what did Jesus do in the resurrection that helps answer the question, where are we going? Or where are you going? We begin in this text in Acts, where Luke begins to tell us that Jesus is really the one that has something to say about where we're going. These first few verses... In my former book, in the Gospel of Luke, I began to tell you about all that Jesus said and did, which somehow transforms the world. Well, what did we learn in Luke? What was it in Luke that Jesus said and did? Well, if you look, turn with me over there, we see some things. We see, first of all, Jesus' mission, Luke 19, verse 10. The Son of Man, Jesus' de de description of himself, came to seek and save that which was lost. So we know that Jesus at least believes there are some people who aren't going the right direction. Jesus, in accordance with the Old Testament scriptures, believes that there are people who are separated from God. They're not going to God. Their sin has them going in the wrong way of even getting back to God. Flip over to chapter 20. Jesus said to them in verse 41, How is it that they say the Christ, the Messiah, is the son of David? David himself declares in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. David calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? This is where Jesus began to get in trouble. Because what Jesus is saying is the Christ has to be more than just man. The message of the gospel becomes it's more than just a man trying to lead people back to God. But it is God becoming man so that people can come back to him. John's gospel, he says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This God's Son is both divine fully and human as well. 
He can be a descendant of David, but he can be the one whom David calls Lord. And if you're a Jewish person, there is but one God. There's only one whom you call Lord in the way that David's speaking of in this text. We begin to see the story that not only is this about you coming back to God, but this is about God wanting to bring you back. And Jesus is saying, I'm the way. As John, again, said in his gospel. Luke continues the story. As he finishes after the resurrection, Jesus appears to two men on the road to Emmaus. And Luke says this is what he did, verse 46. He told them, this is what's written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in, this name, in, this, in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Jesus says, Friday wasn't a mistake. Friday was in the plans. He opened the scripture to them and said, the Christ had to die. The idea of the suffering servant, Isaiah chapter 53, the one who through his suffering and death somehow becomes the victor. There's something about Jesus that changes everything. Luke says, Theophilus, that's what I began to tell you. And what I'm going to tell you in the second book is how the men who followed him become the ones who will begin this message in Jerusalem and take it to all nations. In fact, that's what we see. Jesus begins to tell his disciples, as Lucas read for us this morning, that they are to begin in Jerusalem and to go into Samaria and Judea and to the uttermost parts of the world with this message that Jesus is the only way. 